Hello, I'm Lydia and you're listening to Lens from the Fens. Welcome back to Lens from the Fens. I hope that everyone is doing well and are all looking forward to the new lifting of restrictions where non-essential shops can reopen and I think the rule of six is still in place but we can still meet up to six people or two households now that the warmer weather is should be arriving and that definitely means that we can do a lot more things outside and we can visit a few more places with people obviously not going too far from where we live. Yeah, saying uh, the warmer weather should be arriving, the day that I'm recording this on the 11th of April, there's been sunshine, there has been hail, there has been rain, thunder and lightning and snow all in the space of a couple of hours. So I have no idea what the weather's doing, but it seems to be clearing up now and there's a few uh, blue skies uh, just ahead of me. So for today, as I mentioned in my last live walk, talk and shoot, I would talk a little bit about the reptiles that are sometimes seen within the fens and surrounding it. Uh, Just before I start that though, um, I have recently taken up a free trial with uh, Paint Shop Pro. This is in no way sponsored, this is simply I wanted to say it because I know I don't talk an awful lot about how I edit my pictures or um, like my process for doing it, but I used to use PaintShop Pro when I was back in college. It was very simple, easy to use, and it was a bit more affordable than Photoshop. So I haven't used it since then. I've primarily been using Photoshop uh, since college, Um, but I recently rediscovered it and I'm currently doing a 30 day free trial with them and I'm enjoying it so far. There's um, sort of three different layouts that I can use for editing my pictures. So there's a very quick edit selection where if it's an image where I don't do an awful lot of editing in terms of removing items and I just want to do a simple crop or uh, reduce noise or enhance my image in whatever way, there's that and then there's the slightly advanced version where it's a similar layout to as you would in Photoshop. You have your clone tool, you have um, your cropping tool and things like that. And then there's the full essentials uh, photography system where there's a lot more tools to use and you, you can just do an awful lot more of the image if you're a photographer who likes to do multiple exposures or you like to just create um sort of fantasy images in a way. So yeah, I'm in my first week of it. I'm still uh, getting used to uh, what is available to me. But as they are doing a 30-day free trial, I highly recommend you check them out. I'll reiterate again, this is not sponsored, but because I want to relate to other photographers who might be listening, I want to provide uh, resources that might be useful to you and your work. So if you want to look them up, it is Paint Shop Pro. They do have other uh, systems for more advanced um, photographers and graphic designers, so you're more than welcome to check them out. But I thought I'd just say that I'm looking at new options in how to edit my images, and so far I'm really enjoying it. So um, I might do a future episode where I talk a bit more in depth about it if uh, you'd be interested to hear it. Um, But yeah, that's all I wanted to say for the introduction. So now that's out of the way, I'm going to go ahead with the uh, topic of this episode, which is about the reptiles that you're most likely to find, whether you're based in the Fens or uh, within any area of England. So I didn't go into full detail previously um, about my experiences with reptiles, but I did briefly mention that I took part in a reptile survey or it's probably about three summers ago. And this was um, located at Fine Shade Wood, 
which is located near Corby and it's part of Forestry England. And the group that led the survey there was amphibian and reptile conservation. So they do an awful lot of work within the surrounding area, um, doing surveys, obviously, uh, for reptiles. And there's quite a few other um, organisations, such as the Back from the Brink project uh, with Roots of Rockingham, uh, Friends of Fine Shade Wood. Um, so they all sort of collaborate together and they conduct these surveys um, with groups of just members of the public or anyone else who works with uh, the Conservation Trust. And yeah, they basically go around this area of Fine Shade Wood and they also allow you to select an area surrounding there if you wish to conduct your own survey to look for all sorts of reptiles that you're most likely to come across. So I remember it being, it was quite a warm day. Obviously reptiles prefer the warmer weather because they can go out, they can bask in the morning. Uh, because they're cold-blooded, uh, the heat from the sun allows them to um, sort of wake up in the way and by the afternoon they'll be out moving, looking for prey um, or finding potential mates. So I'm not sure if they are conducting any surveys uh, for the upcoming summer but you're more welcome to check them out. Um, you can either visit the Northamptonshire Amphibian and Reptile Group or you can go directly to uh, Amphibian and Reptile Conservation or Natural England or the Back from the Prink project and they'll most likely have more details about what they'll be doing for upcoming surveys. But I thought it'd be nice just to reflect back on my experience uh, looking for reptiles as I hadn't really experienced wild ones before. I do like snakes um, so I've seen uh, quite a few either as pets or in captivity at zoos and yeah they're just really fascinating animals and I feel as though like a lot of reptiles and amphibians, they don't get a lot of recognition because a lot of people aren't really keen on them, whether it's their appearance or if they're dangerous to people and even like other pets like cats and dogs. Um, but they are really fascinating and it's really good to know that there have been numbers either steady or slightly increasing in some areas. And yeah, so basically I will just go over the reptiles that I found on the day, a bit of information about them and the other types of reptiles that you can find in your, well hopefully your local area as well. So the first uh, reptile species I'll begin with is the viviparous lizard or the common lizard if that's a bit easier to pronounce. So the adults usually come in about 13 to 15 centimetres long, uh, the colorations and the markings are quite variable uh, but the background colour is genuinely brown. This is more notable on the females as the males often have a flecked pattern on their backs. But when you look at an underside of a male, uh, males have a thicker base to the tail and they also have a bright and speckled underside in comparison to the females, which overall are quite drab underneath. And they often just have very um, light or dark brown stripes on their back. I don't remember seeing these on the day of the survey, but I do remember seeing one at a different reserve, not too far. Um, it was um, at a reserve close to Peterborough and Whittlesea. Um, it was my first ever sighting of a common lizard in the wild. Um, but what I'll do is I'll insert images of the reptiles that I've seen over the years, and then you can have a look at those images and get an idea of um, what they look like and just to help you identify them if you are to find them near you. So another two other lizards that are found but they are quite rare to find is the sand lizard and the walled lizard. So the sand lizard is a lot larger and more heavily built than the common lizard and the adults range in about 16 to 19 centimetres long. Most of them have three rows of eye spots, one along the back and then one on either side of their flank. So they can still be quite well camouflaged, especially when they're resting on uh, like pieces of bark. And as I said, they're a rare species, but they are also, they are almost entirely confined to the heathland sites in Dorset, Hampshire and Surrey, and also on the sand dunes of the Mersey and the Welsh coasts. So they're more than likely not going to be seen in the Fenland area just because the um, environment for them is not quite right. And 
because they are so rare, they are strictly protected. So you actually require a license to handle or disturb lizard if you are to find one nearby or at least contact someone who is licensed to handle them. And the wall lizard is actually a non-native species um, and they are found at a relatively few but an increasing number of sites, mainly in southern England. So they could well be sighted within the fens, um, but it's sort of unknown as to the exact locations of where they live and where they breed. So these, um, again, they're quite larger than the common lizards. They grow to 17 to 18 centimetres, but most of the length is actually in the tail. The body length roughly comes in about six centimetres. So if you were to compare a wall lizard to, say, a common lizard, the main difference would be the length of the tail. And if you don't already know, lizards actually have the ability to lose their tail to if they are threatened by a predator and it will grow back over time, which I find absolutely fascinating. Um, some of the wall lizards have bright green mottling on their back. Some others are brown. And yeah, they're often found on south facing vertical habitats such as walls and cliffs. So if you are living somewhere in the southern half of England, um, if it's a warm day and the sun is hitting uh, one of the walls on your house, maybe, then it's always um, worth looking out, seeing if they're actually resting on that side of the wall when they're sort of warming up at the start of the day. Um, so those are the three main lizards that you can find. Like I said, I don't recall seeing any on that survey, but I have seen for definite a common lizard, which you can find a picture of uh, through my Facebook and my Instagram post. So now I move on to uh, my favourite uh, reptiles in the UK, and that is snakes. So it's quite surprising to some people that there are quite a variety of snakes within the UK, not just um, in England. Um, obviously, the further north you go, obviously the colder it's going to be and the less uh, common they will be, especially in places like Scotland or in the northern most part of England. So when you're down in the south, you are most more likely to find these snakes. And if I remember correctly, I saw two of these species. Again, I will post pictures of them uh, with my post. Um, but anyway, so the first species is the slow worm. So adults can grow in at about 35 to 40 centimetres. They are generally grey or brown and very rarely black and they have very small shiny scales that give them a metallic appearance. So I think it was on one of the first locations we walked to um, at Fineshade Wood and they have uh, refuges. So it's sort of like a metal sheet, sort of like a corrugated roof that you can find um, on like barns and things like that. And I'll lay them in the, on the ground because a lot of reptiles would then go underneath it and the heat coming from the sun would uh, be fed into the metal roof and heat whatever's underneath. So for slow worms especially, they love going under refuges. It's safe, no predators are going to get them and they can still get the warmth of the sun to warm up, basically. So like I said, they're the most common reptile in the UK. They are found in a variety of habitats, including gardens. So it's always worth looking in your garden if you have um, your own space. And yes, they spend most of their time underground or in vegetation litter. So again, that is uh, when you have refuges put out or even things like compost heaps possibly or any sort of mound of earth that you've been moving in your garden or near a field. Uh, the males actually feature blue spots uh, in most cases. So they'll look a lot lighter than the females and the blue spots will uh, sort of... Um, be picked up by the daylight so they sort of sparkle in a way and the females have a darker coloured flanks and often have a black line running along their back as well so these are okay to handle obviously with any wild animal it is quite imperative that you don't disturb them too much but because we were identifying uh, the sexes of the slow worms that we found I think there was about eight in total um, the people leading the group they pick them up and they check the sexes um, and we were able to hold one each as well, um, which was really nice because when you actually look at the face of a slow worm, they're actually uh, quite nice to look at. They're not, they don't look um, aggressive in a way. Like I said, they're very smooth and they're 
you know, they don't bite, they're uh, quite docile. As that was uh, quite fun, uh, just to get right up close to them and sort of look at all the different flecks in the scales and how they move and things like that. So another quite common um, reptile species is the grass snake. So the adults can actually come in between 70 and 100 centimetres long and occasionally some of the females actually grow larger. So in comparison to a slow worm, they're almost double the size, if not larger. So these can be found anywhere, again, um, anywhere where there's sort of grassland. Um, they can also be quite good swimmers. I have seen a couple of times now a grass snake uh, swimming across either a bit of river or in the lake. Um, so they're quite noticeable. I think quite a few people have come to notice them, um, either if they're out fishing or, again, in their own back garden. Um, so the most notable parts uh, when you're identifying one is uh, just uh, behind the head of the snake. They have a cream, yellow or white collar, uh, which is bordered to the rear by some black marks. And then all the way down, they sort of have dots going all the way down the back. And you can actually often find um, all black grass snakes, but they are incredibly rare. So for the slow worm, um, they can also lose their tails a bit like a lizard because the slow worms are basically legless lizards. Um, but the defensive mode that a grass snake puts on is that they actually pretend to be dead. And they'll also release like a foul smell to deter the predator. Um, so they'll often sort of curl up, they'll go on their back, they'll open their mouth, their tongue will come out as well. So that's really sort of deterring the predator from eating them, either because they just died or they just smell really bad. Um, but if you were able to look at the underside of the snake, if you ever come across one and it goes into a defensive dead mode, then you can note um, like checkered black marked markings on their underside. So yeah, like I said, they're quite common. Um, they're quite noticeable with uh, the white marks behind their head and their eyes are quite large as well. They sort of have like big orange eyes. And then when they come to lay eggs, they actually lay in clutches of about 10 to 40. And the hatchlings come in at about 16 to 20 centimetres long and they already have those adult markings with uh, the lines going down their back and the white marks behind their head. And if you are lucky and you come across um, a snake nest, obviously don't disturb it, just leave it be, but you could come to find hatchlings appearing in late August to September. So once they're hatched, they'll go off on their own way and then they'll prepare themselves for the winter months. So another very rare species of snake that the UK has, but again, not as um, well seen as the other snakes I mentioned, is the smooth snake. So they grow uh, to 45 to 55 centimetres and they're very slender, so they're very smooth in appearance and touch. The males are predominantly brown and the females are grey, so that's quite a good way to identify the sex of it. They sport a dark butterfly shape on top of their head, along with a pair of spots, which are sometimes fused together as bars running along the back, and also a black line that runs uh, through the eye. So they have a lot more markings in comparison to, say, a slow worm. But again, because they're so rare, they are quite restricted to the heathlands of Dorset, Hampshire, Surrey. And once again, they're strictly protected, so you will need a license or someone else who owns a license to handle or disturb them. And then the last species, which I had the pleasure of finding on the survey, is the adder. So these are quite stocky snakes in comparison to the others, um, but not as long. Adults usually come in between 40 and centimetres, 70 centimetres long, beg pardon. Um, they are the most colourful or the most patterned of the species we have in the UK. So the males typically have a grey with a black zigzag stripe. The females are generally brown with a dark brown zigzag stripe, which goes all the way down their back to the tail. Um, so when you if you come across a snake like this in the open, it's obviously very noticeable to see them and think, ah, that's an adder. But when they're laying in undergrowth or they're covered up by um, like leaf debris, grass debris, um, then they're actually well camouflaged. So this is one of the things I had to sort of really pay attention to when looking for them during the survey. 
and I believe I came across a male that was on one of like the first locations we were heading to there was one male and there was a couple of females further along and then there was also a tiny um hatchling or like a young adder it was absolutely tiny it was probably no bigger than the palm of my hand all curled up um basking in the sun which was really nice so the newborns were coming at about 16 centimeters and they were actually coming at like a brick red color uh, some others they have similar coloration to the adults but i remember this one being quite brown so there was a leaf like a, a brown fallen leaf next to it and it was hard to tell the difference between the two because it's so well camouflaged so in terms of uh, the types of locations that you can find adders they are actually the most widely distributed species within the UK but they are restricted to certain habitats so that there is heathland, uh, scrub, woodland edges, uh, woodland roads, uh, rail and flood defence embankments um, but they are pretty much seen across the whole of the UK even into Scotland and the main feature that separates this species from our other native species is that it is the UK's only venomous snake. Um, their bites can be potentially dangerous, um, but to humans or dogs, they're very rarely fatal. Um, I looked up some statistics earlier and there are only around 10 recorded cases of deaths from adder bites in the last 100 years. And most bites would actually occur when the snake has been disturbed or uh, deliberately antagonized. So the lesson to learn from that is that if you come across an adder, leave it alone um, to avoid either injury to your dog or yourself. Um, but yeah, I just remember looking at the male and um, the newborn and I was just fascinated by them. They have, the males specifically have the bright red glaring eye and yeah, they're just wonderful species to look at. I know an awful lot of people might not like snakes, but they're definitely one of the most attractive snakes uh, that we have in the UK. As with a lot of places in the UK, um, you are likely to come across some non-native snakes. One of them being the um, non-native grass snake, which has two yellow stripes along the back. And they're established only in very few places. But it is also likely that you come across um, escaped pet snakes. Uh, things like milk snakes and corn snakes, they're quite a popular uh, snake to own as a pet. But these often aren't encountered as much as the actual native species that we have. So if you're ever interested in uh, wanting to see if snakes live in your area then one of the most easy ways in which to do that is to look for a snake skin. So reptiles obviously have the feature where they shed their skin um, on um, like a repeated cycle and you can also see if you can find eggshells which might be in compost heaps um, or in anywhere like heathland areas but it's just really important that if you do come across uh, a snake nest obviously leave it be uh, don't disturb the eggs because there might be newborns that haven't hatched yet um, or the adult might be around and they might get defensive so just leave it be um, as I said near the beginning there's quite a few organizations that will either help with surveys or if you do come across uh, the rarest species of snake, uh, they will more likely be licensed to handle it and they'll remove it from the premises and uh, release it into um, a more preferred environment. So yeah, just remember to do your research if you are to come across a snake. More importantly, just leave them alone. Don't go try picking it up or just to take it home. Uh, just leave it be and give it some space because obviously if you approach it especially with an adder if you get too close that's where you'll interrogate it and it will most likely bite you which none of us want <laughs> um but yeah that's sort of um the overview of the reptiles within the uk um i'll be posting the images alongside uh, when i put this recording out so the weather is looking a lot more promising now i'm coming to the end of this episode and with that, I am very much looking forward to going out for more walk, talk and shoots, as I've said many times before. So yeah, I'm hopefully going to have another outing in the near future on hopefully a less dramatic day than today. I just can't believe how many seasons sort of came through within the space of a couple of hours. Um, 
but yeah, I'm I'm very much looking forward to going out again. Obviously, taking my microphone, speaking uh, to you guys, and yeah, just going out to get more pictures taken. Also, just to round this off, um, with me doing a free trial of the Paint Shop Pro, this has actually coincided with um, my first new, brand new laptop uh, since my college years. Um, so I got this um, laptop especially uh, uh, put together for me. I basically requested uh, the type of hard drive size that I wanted and the system. And it's just going to allow me to do a lot more with my images in terms of the screen space I have. I'm going to be able to pick out uh, further details that I either want to keep or I don't want to keep. Um, so yeah, everything's uh, brand new for me at the moment. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's been a while since I've done a sit-in episode, it feels like. I think just because I've been going out a lot more again, it's sort of nice to come back in and sit down and just talk, um, yeah, about more wildlife of the fens. Um, as always, I enjoy it. I enjoy talking to you. And as always, I'll be speaking to you again in the very near future. Goodbye. My podcast cover shows my own image created using Canva. The theme music is provided by Purple Planet Music. Check out their royalty-free music at purple-planet.com. Thank you.